Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's a uh, time to start this week. This week's Wisdom Weekly Call. It's so good to see everybody's faces. Welcome. I hope you're having a good week and have been hitting it and making all sorts of wonderful things happen in this world. Um, we start off here with reminding about if you want to get reminded about these calls, which I think most of you are getting the text reminders because you're so prompt. Um, go ahead and make sure you text WB to 678-736-8071. Again, the letter is WB to 678-736-8071. And you'll get reminders every week for these calls. You want to make sure you don't miss them because they're super fun and exciting to uh, see the team come together and hear what's happening and find out fun information. We've got all these fun challenges that we want to find out who's winning. So, um, okay, we are going to move on to retreat. Retreat is coming up sooner than later. It's actually April 12th through the 14th. If you're not registered, make sure you register yourself at wisdombuildersretreat.com. That is going to be in Talladega, Alabama, um, and we are, look forward to seeing you guys there. Bring your team. The, we do have an affiliate program going on right now, um, so you can earn $50 cash for every front-level person that signs up for retreat. So if you need a little help making it to retreat yourself, find somebody to come with you, get them signed up, and you can get $50 cash back at retreat, I believe for helping them get to retreat. So we're super excited about that, being able to offer that. And we're hoping to um, max that room out. It'll be so good to have people there. It is such a fun time of community and education and connecting and all the things. So um, if you have anybody that you think would enjoy it, make sure you get them thinking about it right now, sooner than later. Um, okay. This is what we've been waiting for on this call, right? What's happening from the last week? Uh, we are going to do the weekly activity challenge. Bessie, if you want to share the screen. The activity this week was epic. You guys, this was so cool. This five-day live video challenge. And so many of you participated in this uh, challenge. I was so impressed. We have Adam and Jalen Autry, Hattie Shepard, Jody Sievers. Chelsea Clark, Nicole Blaine, Elizabeth Martin, Byron James, Samantha Parker, Alan Blaine, Scott Stierl, I still don't know how to pronounce your last name, Sterling, Joseph Steiner, and Daryl Sievers. Awesome, you guys. Way to go. Those lives really do change a lot of people's um, perspective about what you're doing and get you connected to your lives um, and what's going on. So um, it's really cool to get out there. Well done. And uh, we have a couple honorable mentions. Beck Williams and Angela, you guys started a little late, but you're on a roll. Keep it up. Just because the challenge is over does not mean you have to stop. People are going to join in and be excited. So well done. Good job on that. Um, that was a really, really cool challenge. We're excited about that one. Um, I'm going to tell you what the next one is coming up soon. But the um, new achievers are new signups. There were a lot of signups. You guys, last week, there were 26 signups, I believe. And this week, there were over 30 signups. So you guys are making the gains. The roll, the uh, ball is rolling, I guess would be to say. We want to get that snowball effect. The more people that join and get excited, then the just the energy kind of continues. So keep it up. Um, there are a lot of signups. Alan and Nicole, um, Solomon Guzman, Angela. Julie, Rebecca Williams, Gabby Merritt, Hattie Shepard, Mandy Boer, Amanda Smith, Danielle Boswick, Adam and Jalen Autry, and Don Holsinger. Well done, you guys. I'm sure there were a couple more of you out there that didn't post, but um, for those of you that did post, you're recognized here and well done. We're super excited about those that are joining. Um, Betsy, do we want to spin the wheel and see who the winner is for this week of the signups? Is this exciting, you guys, to see every week who it's going to be? Mandy! Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, Mandy. Well done. You have been rocking it. I am so proud of you. It's so exciting that you get to win this week's raffle. So you will be winning $200 cash. Um, I'll be reaching out to you to see how we can get you that cash. But congratulations. $200 to Mandy Boer. Way to go, you guys. Okay. On to next week's challenge. So we're going to, um, oh, before I get there, let's remind everybody about the power hour that's coming up tomorrow. 
So tomorrow, Saturday, no, it's not. It's the first Saturday, right? Alan? Yeah. Okay. That's next week. I'm ahead of the game, which is usually how I am. So don't worry about that. Um, next Saturday will be the power out, but I do want to talk about next week's activity challenge. Um, and you guys all have access to this calendar. Um, and I want to remind you guys how to get there. Actually, I don't have the link in front of me right now. Hang on. Let's see. Let me find the link. I can share screen here. Betsy, do you have the link to the calendar? Nope. I can share it for you, Marilee, if you okay, like. Go, yeah, go ahead. Let's share the link to the calendar um, so we can talk about next week's activity challenge. And also, Alan, you probably want me to mention this Saturday's Eric Worry thing, too, because that's on the calendar. Okay, the activity, and Lawrence, I believe you're going to be sharing a little bit on this. Is that right, Lawrence? Or are you about ready to start? I'm going to be um, turning it over to Lawrence here in a second. Yes. Lawrence, are you wanting to say something about this? No, go ahead. No, oh, no, okay. Okay, so this week's challenge, starting, oh, that wasn't it, was it? I think we're on the wrong month. Alan, yeah, go back to January. Okay, there we are. We're on January 28th. Grow your list challenge. The grow your list challenge is starting today goes through this Thursday, um, and it is third-party credibility cannot be overstated. It's so effective, it's almost magical. So this is the group chat challenge. You want to get people in group chats. You want to help them to get connected. And so sometimes if you're just communicating one-on-one, -on -one, that's super valuable. When you can add a third party to that conversation, it really makes the communication extra um, credible and it can help information um, help communicate information in a way that we can't necessarily always communicate it so um i'll go ahead and i'll let you guys read this i don't know if i need to read the whole thing uh but we're gonna so the challenge for this next week alan do you want to speak on this a little bit i'm a little fuzzy here yeah i would just say this mo probably the most important thing is just to know wh where do you find the google calendar to start with and make sure that you can find that in the feature to in the featured post, pin post of Wisdom Builders Facebook group, or you can find it in um, the All Promoters Telegram chat. I'm sorry, in the links and resources. Links and resources make sense, right? Telegram chat. Um, and that's where you find the Google Calendar. But we're seeing, what we're seeing is those that are putting people, I clicked on the wrong one, Marilee. I messed you up. I'm so sorry. This is the following week. It's grow your list well, really messed you up. No wonder what, what we got going on. Here we go. I'm so sorry that the, this I week's challenge. Like, hey, I'm going to let you talk about it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That was my fault. I clicked on the wrong one. This is this week's challenge. Grow your list challenge. Can you still see that? Yeah. Yeah, we can see that one. Okay, so January 26th, starting today through February 1st. Yeah, it totally caught me off guard. I was like, wait, so I got sorry. Okay, go, so you sorry. can say, keep talking on it anyway. Go ahead. Well, I think Lawrence will probably share a lot more about this in, the, in his training today, but just the importance of we don't ever want to get to a place, all business is conversation, and we don't ever want to get to a place where like, I've talked to the same 30 people I know, and now what, right? I don't care what business you're talking about. There's got to be new people coming in, whether it's ads, whether it's it, depending on the business, right? How do businesses get customers? So we want to continue to grow our list. And I think Lawrence will address that. This will explain uh, what the challenge is, but we're, we're shooting to earn uh, at a minimum of 15 new connections to our list in the week. That is the challenge. You can read more about it. Add 15 new connections to your world, to your life in the next seven days starting today. Thanks, Mary Lee. Awesome, guys. And you'll want to go ahead and recognize that in the all promoters telegram chat spot. Um, and so that you can be included in the raffle. And without further ado, Lawrence, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to you. You can give us more information. I'll wrap it up at the end. Great. You did a great job, Marilee. Thank you. Uh, especially with the curveball you got thrown. Oh, <laughs> uh, You know, we're going to talk today about uh, what's one of the essential ingredients you need to sign up more promoters. Well, it goes back to learning to use the inviting formula. You know, we've got to we've got to help bring out why people want and need this business because obviously they're not going to do the business if they don't want it or need it. 
And most people have gotten to a place in their life. You know, 20 year olds, if you talk to people in college, they have this dream of being a, a millionaire. Uh, but by the time you get in the business world after a few years, you realize that probably is never going to happen as your mentality switches. And so you give up and you just take what life brings to you and you accept it. And so a lot of them aren't looking for a business because they've given up and they don't know a vehicle that can help them to hit their dreams and their, their goals and sometimes how to even get out of debt, how to fulfill their needs. They're just sort of going to pay as much as they can. And even though the debt keeps increasing, they're just that's they're going to just look at TV at night and try to forget about it. And so that inviting formula, learning to be to, to handle that with skill is so critical if you want to sign up more promoters, because, again, I always say when I'm talking about the inviting formula, before I tell somebody about the inviting formula, when I'm training them, I say to them, do you know how to avoid getting no's? And everybody wants that, right? Nobody likes no's. I mean, everybody's afraid of them, scared of them. We shouldn't be, but we are. If we're, you know, honest and forthright, most of us at least are scared of them. And so they love hearing, how do you avoid getting a no? And then I tell them, say, never ask somebody if they want something until they've told you that they do want it, right? Duh. And, you know, that makes sense to somebody and that relieves them. They say, well, that makes sense. Yeah. How can I do that? Well, that's where the inviting formula comes in. And like most things, it's not good enough just to say, oh, I know the inviting formula. I heard that. No, it's learning it. So it's like your birthday. It's like the back of your hand. You know, you can't fail to remember your birthday. That's how good you need to know the inviting formula that you just when you're in a pressured situation, because. Again, there's they teach this in, in football, professional football. They say in college football, they teach that, you know, you got to keep practicing to you. You know, it's almost you know, not just to perfection, but to you can't make a mistake. That's your goal. You, you know, it's so well, you just can't make a mistake. That's that's the goal. But you to get there, not only do you need to practice it, you have to first practice it in the practice time, but then you have to have real life game experience. And they, they teach this in professional football in college, again, that you have to have game experience because it's one thing to do it in practice. There's another in real life. And this business is a lot harder, you know, when you go out to apply it, you know, it's, you know, teaching, you know, hearing us teach about how to do the inviting formula is one thing, going out and getting good enough so you use it and are skilled at it is quite another. I remember hearing Eric Worre and, and Ray Higdon talking one time, and they said, you know, one of the greatest tragedies in MLM is this, that nobody practices. They learn, they keep learning, but they don't practice it. And they don't apply it in real life. And so using that inviting formula, Again, you want to, uh, if you can remember, you want to connect with somebody first, and then at a point in time, you want to move to asking your question to get to the business area. And I'll never forget, and I want to say this, the, the importance of this, so I don't forget it, is I remember Dr. Lawson telling me, because he built a big business, if you know his history, uh, built a gigantic business. and. And he said, first impressions are so important. If you don't ever talk about the business in that first time talking to them, they'll always think of you as a supplement person, the vitamin person. And later on, when they have a need to make money, they're not going to think of you because you didn't do it in that first impression when you met them. And, you know, and it's disappointing when you find out somebody, one of your customers signs up in another MLM uh, to, to make money because they just didn't think of this. And that's because of us. And so when you're using that inviting formula, again, we talk about, you know, start off positive, 
whether you're talking about health or you're talking about, um, you know, business. And so, you know, you ask a person, what do you do for uh, an occupation? And then say, how long have you been doing that? Wow, you must love it. Doesn't matter if they've been doing it a week, they picked it. And then, you know, so start off positive. Why did you pick that occupation? You know, what drew you to it? And so, again, they're going to, a lot of times, you know, when you start doing that, you're going to start uncovering things. And when you say you must really like it, a lot of times, believe me, they're going to start telling you the negatives. And it's, again, a lot better for them to mention the negatives than you. Because then you've put them down and then they're going to defend themselves. So you've gotten in the wrong posture. And so if they don't, though, tell you any negatives, you can say, is there, you know, you just say to them with a puzzled look, is there anything negative about it? Like your boss or the, you not enough time freedom or, or is it, you know, it sounds wonderful. And again, just listen. And once you start hearing that, you know, don't rush to it, you know, like a lion jumping on its prey, but slowly, you know, start digging a little deeper to try to get to their emotions, to get them, because a lot of times they're going to give you surface things. And so you want to get their feelings involved because just like uh, I've heard that Aristotle, the great logic person, he taught just what we all know, no matter how important logic is. And no matter how well we think we are logical and we make all our decisions on logic, reality is we make them on emotions. And our feelings are one of the most powerful drivers in our lives and other people's lives. And so you want to get them feeling what they don't like and what they would want a solution for, something they would like, they want, or something they need and they're not getting. And so, again, when you use that, then you bring that out. Now they're ready to hear about what you have. If you start talking to them about it before you've asked the questions, and that's just, it, and I have that problem. I mean, it, the more I try to practice, you know, talking to people about the business, the more I see my weaknesses and, and, and my failures. That's what I love about this business is just how much better we can all get. If we'll just practice this. And as I'm doing it, I, I keep seeing, man, I need to get good at this because this would help me be a better mate, a better parent, better grandparent. If I could get good and skilled at asking questions and because and, people don't argue with themselves. And so when you're doing that, you know, you're going to get them. So now they're ready for a solution. And then again, we need to not jump like a lion immediately. We need to say, if there was a solution for that, would you want to hear about it? Would you be interested? I remember hearing a, a, a video a, a long time ago of Jim Rome. And I don't know if y'all, most of y'all know this, but Jim Rome, Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, they all used to be in uh, Jerry Brassville's downline. So again, what does that point to? That, I'll tell you what that points to me is this business can help you grow to be a leader and a motivator and a life changer of people. And I remember Jim Rome saying when he was recruiting and he would like be in front of a waitress, have a waitress helping him. He would say, uh, can I ask you a question? They said, sure. And they'd say, have you found, is this business, is this job, or have you found a business that can help you and your family fulfill your dreams and give you what you need for now and in the future? Have you found that vehicle, that opportunity? And they say no most of the time. And then he says, can I ask you the second most important question? you're ever going to need to ask yourself and, to, and somebody to ask you. And can I tell you that? And they said, yes, what is that? Are you taking time each week to search for that? Are you taking just at least some little time each week to find an opportunity that can help you and your family to be all it should be now and in the future? 
And he said, I'm going to give can I give you a little bit of advice? And they said, yeah, if you will do that, you will feel so much better about yourself if you'll just start giving that time. So again, you just see he used questions to help people to think, to bring it to the forefront of their minds that they wanted more. They needed a solution. They should keep looking for a solution. And so I hope we'll all start practicing that more because, again, there are so many people that have just given up, you know, looking for one. You'd just be surprised. Most people aren't going to tell you that their credit card is debt is going up each month, that they don't have hope of getting out of it. And again, you, you, most of you probably know a lot of the people uh, are just a few hundred dollars away, you know, uh, of going bankrupt. And just a few hundred dollars could make the difference of them not going that, but they're not going to tell you that you're not going to hear that. They're just not going to just unload on that to you. And it's, if you don't ask questions and show that you care and that you're interested. And so again, I hope we all start practicing this inviting formula more. And I hope we keep going after that principle that you got to keep, if you want to get more promoters, you've got to do that principle that Jesus taught not only works in the spiritual world, like he was using it for, but it works in the physical world that we've got to keep seeking promoters if we want to find them. We've got to keep asking them questions if we want to receive. And we've got to keep knocking on their doors, more people's doors. That's why that list is so important if we want to find a promoter, because not everybody is ready to start a business, but we need to at least put it in their minds and starting them to get to thinking they need to be looking for a solution and that we offer solutions, you know, but one of the other things I wanted to mention about this and finding more promoters is, is you not only need to find out there why they would want to do it. You have to have a why that's strong enough to make you go and ask them about this. Now, some people they're going to do it because they need more money and that's that's a driving force. And that's not necessarily bad. It's like Zig Ziglar says, you know, you can tell me what money is not important, but believe me, it's it's sort of like air. If you don't have any, you know how much you need it and want it. And so. But, you know, like people like me that, uh, you know, after I got saved, money just lost its drive for me. And, you know, thankfully, I, I read that in Luke 16 that helped me get some common sense that he says, if you don't know how to handle money, then you can't be entrusted with true riches. And I said, OK, well, at least I got to learn to be a better steward. And I tell you, I've got a lot further to go. And I, I can remember sitting in Hawaii this last trip we won with people in, in our group. And I was just sitting there at that table and I was listening to Dwight and Chad and some of the others, Gabe. And just say, man, they have so much more wisdom about handling money than I do. You know, I, I wasn't taught any common sense about handling it. And I've got so much further to go. And again, I just love this business, getting to be around people that are better than me, that know things that I don't know. And I love that, being able to learn from them. But you've got to find, again, what is your why that will drive you to go and ask people? I can tell you some of the whys. I had to keep switching my whys to keep my drive when I was really going after building this business in the first five years is I had to keep finding whys that would drive me. And, you know, some of my drives just to tell you, and everybody's going to have a different one that motivates you. But one of mine was, is, you know, I wanted to help husbands to be able to come back home, to be like it used to be. You go back 100 years and most people had family businesses, either on the farm or a store, but they were all together. And now we've separated people out. And that drove me. And I realized that like most uh, adultery happens with somebody at the workplace because they're spending more hours with somebody else than they are their mate. And that drove me because I care about people and I want to make a difference. And it drove me to want to help people to, to 
to start a business so that they could come together as a family and you could bring the husband home. I also wanted to help, uh, you know, Marjorie asking me, could she start a business and just opening my eyes about Proverbs 31, the balance. You know, I think we can get so out of balance, you know, even as Christians, you know, that's because we need to keep reading all the word and we don't all know it yet. And, you know, just seeing that in Proverbs 31, that yes, she should do well in looking after her family. So yes, being at home, I think is important. And I wanted to help women get at home to be able to quit their jobs if they wanted to. But I also saw the balance that he said they knew how to sell and buy and obviously to make money. So I see that to see, I think that can help a, a, a a woman be a better mate to understand what her husband's going through and is doing and can help her children because they've got to go out in the working world. I mean, you don't want to raise your kids to always stay at home like this generation's doing. <laughs> you want to help them to learn to be get the skills to be able to go out and support themselves. And having that business can help them do it. So that drove me to want to help that. And I also saw people that, uh, you know, like we had two uh, people in our team that their husbands lost their job. And if those women had not built a business, that it would have been just disaster. And one of them would have lost their house, but instead they ended up paying off their house. And, you know, their husband later on finding a job. Those things drove me to say there are needs out there. I've got to get out there and help people and tell them about this business. So at least I've done my part when they run into those problems. You know, I, I, you know, one of the things that drove me is I hated seeing people when I was building this business that I would share this with them. They say, Oh, that's network marketing. Isn't it? And I'd say, yeah, Oh, I tried that before and it didn't work. Well, that drove me to say, I want to get to people first. I want to let them know there is a network marketing company that will last that won't go out of business after you've given your life and gotten your friends involved i wanted them to know there's a 60 year old company that's growing and that's designed to be there in the future and that the owners aren't going to sell it out to make a profit and forget about those distributors that built it you know, I saw people that I would try to, I would see with health needs and they, and I would tell them about our vitamins and they would say, Hey, you know, I've tried vitamins before and they didn't work. So they had a closed mind. They weren't going to be burnt again and disappointed again. And that drove me to say, I want to get to those people first. I also had this drive of, you know, another one of the drives that would come up sometimes to, to motivate me was the thought is I didn't want to be at one of our conventions, summits, and see somebody, you know, in the elevator, you know, going to the summit room that I knew that somebody else had signed up because I'd never talked to them. Or I wasn't skilled enough as that person was. I didn't follow up with that person, keep them in my contact list to follow up every six months because, again, people's needs change. That's why you want to tell them about the business. So if they lose their job, if they get a terrible boss, et cetera, they think of you. Oh yeah. He told me that you can make great money with this. And so you not only need to find, I want to end with, you not only need to find out what are their whys they might want to do this business you need to find your whys if you want to find promoters, things that drive you to want to go help people, to do it from a helping point of view. So anyway, I wanted to finish up in time. Alan, do I get a clap yeah. for that? <laughs> Good job, Lawrence. Way to watch the clock there. No, you did a great job. Thank you so much. It's always a joy to hear from you one of our founders. I did not introduce you very well, Lawrence Clark, one of our founders of the Wisdom Builders team. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And I just think it is so good to hear different things that drive you or that has driven you over the period of time that you've been building this. And we, I know a lot of us can relate to those same things. There's otherwise out there, other reasons that people are um, pursuing this and helping others. And I know that this team is a group of passionate people that love and care for others. And that really is going to be um, what's moving the needle in the right direction. So I just appreciate what you shared. 
so much. And um, conversation, you started out talking about conversations, that it is an art and it's worth learning the skills that are necessary. I know when I was in school a long time ago, this shy little nerd, I don't know how I could communicate a single thing that anyone would listen to. But over the years, when you learn and you apply and you practice, like we were saying, all those things, it really can uh, help you develop and and ultimately be able to connect with people better, be able to hear their concerns, understand where they're coming from, get on their level of um, understanding so that they can resonate with what you're saying and and potentially join Neolife, which is ultimately why we're here. We want them healthy. We want them on Neolife products. So I just appreciated what you shared. Thank you so much. Um, last little tidbit here on the weekly challenge. And this is a great segue into that because you shared a lot of ways that we can connect with other people. The challenge for this week is to add new people to your list of people that you communicate with about Neolife. So in any area of life, we have people that we already connect with. This challenge is about bringing in new people into your circle. Um, and I loved the challenge that we had a while ago, the gratitude challenge, just reaching out to somebody, telling them something you appreciate about them. You guys practice that. We practice that. You do that. You might end up connecting with people that aren't in your circle that you um, could bring in to have a conversation about Neil at some point. So that's a way to do that. Uh, just explore different ways you want to uh, bring people in. So that's going to be the challenge for this next week. So thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Anything else want to be added or any questions? Or are we good to go? I wanted are to just good? say one thing. Can I say one thing? Please. When you're, when you're talking, when you got somebody and their interest is nutrition, don't do a big, try to do a big switcheroo. Just be careful of that. And, you know, show them appreciation but you can at the least say to them you can at least fact find about their business so that you can come back at another time and talk about the business but before you leave that conversation if you can always say now look if you know anybody that loves people likes helping people we're looking for other people to help us get this message out please tell me if you ever know anybody that would like to make some money helping people and that way you've at least in that given them a first impression about this business and you've done it in such a way that shows the cause. And so you're not really doing a switcheroo on them, but yet you have learned about their business so that you can come back maybe at another time and go deeper. Absolutely. Plant the seed. They don't know unless they hear, right? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I'll just add, I'll just add one more thing. Food for thought for everyone is I love doing this is if the business to tag along that if the business conversation is all product, I mean, if the conversation is all product health related, once it gets to the point where, hey, if I invite you into a Facebook group and tag in a video, if I send you a video, or if I invite you on a zoom, whatever you're inviting them to, would you watch it? Would you attend? What? Yes. Great. Do you want me just to get you the information on just the products? Or would you be interested in learning about the business as well? I just asked awesome. that as a follow up question. And people I'm telling you, like, Probably a third of the people or a quarter of the people will go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me that information on the business as well. And the other three fourths will say, no, just the product's great. So that's another thing that can be done on the back end. Awesome Absolutely. tip. Yeah, really good. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for being on a call. We're on a little bit over time, so we'll let you go, but we will see you on next week's call. Take care, everybody. Have a great Bye, week. Everyone.